Hello, hello! Welcome to the Moana Adams Podcast. I'm your host, Moana, a 15-year-old with a ton to say about mental health, wellness, self-love, and a whole lot more. So let's get into it. Hello, hello! I feel like I'm forgetting something in my, like, pre-recording checklist, but I don't know what it is, so let's just get started. Welcome to episode 18. We are talking about negative self-talk today, but first... As always, let's do our things. I have already recorded this episode once. I was not in the best location to record, so I don't like the way the audio quality ended up. So we're doing it again, like five days later. And we're going to do Gratefuls. I am grateful for music this week or today because... Music has always been a really big part of my life. My dad is definitely the one who's really done that for me and has always, he loves music and has always shared it with our family. And we went to the Claire Rosencrantz concert. Uh, He took me and my friend Kate and it was a ton of fun. And music is just a really big part of my life and I'm really grateful that I have that. And I love that it brings people together and... I don't know. I love to dance and I dance all the time randomly. And so I'm just really grateful for music. And my currently loving is smoothies. Now, I'm a little bit disappointed because the first time I recorded this, I had a smoothie. And today I don't have a smoothie. But I also learned that when you go to Planet Smoothie, every single one of their different f- quote unquote fresh fruits are kept in a big tub of like sugary syrup. It's like a simple syrup except for their bananas and blueberries those are the only fruits that they use that are not covered in sugar which is frustrating but also explains why they're so delicious and you can never make them as good at home um but it's frustrating because even when people try and eat more fresh fruits and vegetables unless they ask they don't know that they're actually getting stuff covered in refined sugar but they're still delicious and I still love them. I always get the Immunity Igniter. It's got strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, chia seeds, and orange juice. So good. Delicious. I love berries. But let's do negative self-talk. So I always like to say explain it a little bit. So if you're not aware of what it is, you know now. Negative self-talk is essentially you're bullying yourself inside your head. You're giving, I mean, you're being negative towards yourself. You're being your own worst critic. And it's something that I feel like a lot of us have to unlearn. It's, I think it, the the origins of a lot of people's negative self-talk, and there's so many different types that uh, we don't have time to go over today, but maybe at some point we will. And they all originate from somewhere. You're not born beating yourself up inside your own head and nobody can see inside your own head so it makes it even more difficult because nobody can understand quite what you're going through even if everybody else does experience negative self-talk it's never the same for two people I have always said and always believed that you should be your own number one fan you should be your own cheerleader because nobody else is gonna do it nobody else is gonna be there for you all the time to cheer you on to tell you to get stuff done And negative self-talk is inevitable, like you can't avoid it. But if we figure out where it started and figure out what we can do to help reduce it, that's what's going to help us on our journey to self-love, which is what all of February has been about. So where does it start? I'm only going to give a few examples or areas of life that it can start, but there's I mean, there's hundreds of thousands of ways it could have started. And it's really just an experience that you have or uh, many experiences. I think the main ones are toxic relationships, especially with parents. If you grow up or have parents who are not, they, their expectations are overly high for you or, you know, are just not supportive of you and who you are and what you want to be, then that definitely 
can start negative self-talk, academic pressure from parents, teachers, yourself, that kind of thing. And then there's, of course, fitness. I think that's a huge one. And then body image, which kind of goes with fitness sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't. And I think everybody starts somewhere. And it's it can be hard to figure out the start of it. Sometimes I'll get triggered by something. Not even necessarily negative self-talk. And I think about it. I think about it hard. And I'm like, why? When did this start? What? What do I look back on? Like, looking back, what was it that that made me feel this way? And I feel like maybe eight times out of ten, I will realize I'm like, oh, oh, wow. When I was eight years old, this happened, and that's why I feel like this. Or that's why this thing triggers my anxiety. And I think it's important to look at that. But I think it's also important not to get caught up in it if you can't figure out where it started it's okay just focus on what's happening right now and how it's affecting you negative self-talk it causes low self-esteem low self-confidence it feeds anxiety and depression and can it can in some people trigger a fight or flight response so it's really important that we address it and not just leave it unchecked i think the first step is to just recognize it and be like, oh, hey, maybe I shouldn't say that about myself. Or why am I saying this about myself? Or just notice when it's happening and where it's happening and who it's happening around. You always start having negative self-talk in this part of your life or around these people. You need to recognize that and be like, hold on, why, what, what is triggering this in this relationship? Understanding what part of yourself you're attacking is definitely definitely really important. I think it is usually our insecurities and abilities and skill level. I always have a really hard time with imposter syndrome and I'm like, this isn't good enough. I'm too young. Those kinds of things are definitely things that go through my head pretty often. And I think it's I think it's important to know that. Know what it is exactly. And I think It's almost always subconscious and it's hard to catch, but once you do start to catch it, I promise it gets easier. But understanding the why and the when. When or where is it happening? When you're scrolling social media, when you're with certain people, when you're working out or playing a sport, when you're getting ready in the morning and you're looking in the mirror, when is the negative self-talk happening? When you're finishing up a project and you don't know how you did, when and where is it happening? What are you saying? What part of yourself are you attacking? And why? I think there's a big difference between saying I feel and I am. We can say I feel pretty versus I am pretty. Which one is stronger? The I am. But it goes the other way. I feel ugly. I am ugly. So it goes both ways. And I think it's really good to recognize almost everything as a feeling. And... Sure, it's also great to recognize the positive things as permanent I am because saying you are is more set in stone, more permanent, but a feeling goes away. A feeling doesn't last forever. And so I always say pretty is a feeling. Some days you feel it and some days you don't, and that's okay. You're not always going to feel pretty. Just changing the words that we use even if it's still negative self-talk, it completely shifts it because it's going from saying, I feel like this, what can I do to make myself feel better? Versus I am like this and I can't do anything to change it. We also have to recognize that negative self-talk is a habit. It's a habit that we develop and it's hard to get rid of and almost impossible to totally get rid of. There will always be a voice inside your head criticizing you for something. That's just how it is because we are trying to do our best and be our best and it's just, it's just being human, but we have to understand that we don't have to always listen to that. It's just because it says it doesn't mean it's true and you can choose to believe what you think and say is true or not. You get that choice and by choosing that, you're lying. That's not true. 
that's not correct. You are slowly pushing that habit away. But the best way to get rid of a habit is to replace it. So what I did for a really long time was anytime I caught myself thinking negatively about myself, I would take a sip of water. So I almost always had my water bottle with me. So it was something very easy to do, very quick. Nobody else would see it or notice what I was doing. I'm just taking a sip of water. And slowly it started replacing that habit and also gives you a second to take a sip of water. You're not talking or anything. You're focused on the water and you can be like, hold on. Why, why did I, why did I say that about myself? What, what's happening up here? And slow down. Another really good one is saying an affirmation and it doesn't have to be out loud, but saying one that replaces the negative, a positive affirmation that replaces the negative one you just said can be really great. And it really hits that habit of negative self-talk like to the core. It's definitely more difficult than just taking a sip of water, but it definitely helps. And like I said, you don't have to say it out loud. I mean, sure, saying it out loud is great, but just by practicing that even if it's just in your head is still like so much progress I also think about when I say those things the law of attraction and my parents explained this to me a long time ago when I was younger and we were in the car driving I guess it I mean it's got to be a few years ago now when I learned about this and I guess my brother said something I'm not sure but Let me break it down for you. If you're in the car right now, or if you're near a window that faces a road, or next time you're in the car and you're driving around, look for a red car. Once you see one, don't stop thinking about red cars or red trucks or whatever, and you'll start to see more and more red cars or trucks or whatever it may be. One just drove by. And it's not that there's more red cars on the road just because you're thinking about it. It's because you're noticing that and you're attracting that and you're focused on it. That's the biggest thing. You're focused on the red cars so the other ones you don't really notice as much. So if you're focused on positive self-talk, the negative self-talk is less and vice versa. So by focusing on the positive we're pushing more positive. The more you put it out there, the more true it is. So, put more positive out. Another red truck just drove by. It really does work and it's really interesting and there's another red car. It's really fun. Sometimes randomly I'll think about it in the car and I'm like, oh, there's a red one. Oh, there's another one. There's another one. There's another one. Like, wow, that's crazy. So, try it out. Just remember that you don't have to believe everything you say just because you say it's not true, just because you think it's not true, and just slowly work on it. Start to notice it, start to pay attention to what you're saying to yourself, and cut out the negative self-talk. Keep it to a minimum. Obviously, you can't cut it out completely, but do your best to put more energy into the positive. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to give this podcast a rate and review, as well as follow me on all my socials linked in the show notes. Don't forget to drink some water, and I'll talk to you later.